So, hello everybody again. Now it's the last attempt to put our thoughts together and think and review how far we've gone during these two days and most importantly I think what we have to do next after these two days. And that is what, what our, our speakers today uh, in this last part will, will be talking about. And uh, the sequence is exactly as, as it is planned. So for the wrap up from all the parallel and, and, and plenary sessions will be now given by Richard. Please, Richard. Thank you very much for the um, opportunity to, um, I don't know if it's an opportunity or a challenge or a, whatever it is to wrap up a very, very interesting conference. Um, what, I was, what I'm going to look at is basically what we've done today really is quite a rich, if we take it all together, we've done quite a rich conference. Uh, we're looking at governance, operational programs, widening cities, quadruple helix, open data, interregional synergies, all linked around to smart specialization. But what I put out there is regions at the top. Because one of the things I always say about the WIRE conference is that the WIRE is the, one of the few conferences in Europe that starts from the regions. That we have a regional starting point. And this is a very, very valuable opportunity because many conferences talk about research and then they add on regions. They may talk about innovation, they add on regions. But WIRE is the one conference that starts from the regional perspective. And I think that's something we should be very proud of that this WIRE is now the sixth WIRE and there will be another one, seventh, coming up next year. Um, just I'm going to go very quickly through the opening session because I think that that was two days ago or last year. Many people may have forgotten that bit. Uh, but I'll go very quickly through this uh, and then go on to some of the sessions, the parallel sessions, and before sort of concluding. It was very interesting, the first thing, that cities and regions are where knowledge is built and stored. And this, the role of cities and regions in attracting innovative people and companies was also stressed. Regions need to think beyond the borders and of course there was also this view that innovation brings productivity and prosperity. We were reminded that it was time to act. This is a part of our slogan for WIRE this year. Um, and the, the re research and development was a cross-cutting priority for EU. But remember that also that the EU, we talk about widening and different differentiation within Europe. Europe itself is in a global race, in, in, in the R&D race. And in fact, we were reminded, in fact, that we set the 3% goal, in, I think it was in 2001, so we're now coming up to 2020, and we've not arrived at the 3%. In fact, we're more or less going backwards. So this is why also we mentioned that perhaps the elephant in the room that we didn't talk about very much today was the Juncker plan or the fund, European Fund for Strategic Investment. And I'm pretty sure that that will be on the agenda for the next wire on that session. We did mention though that the horizon has been a great success um, with 43,000 proposals and 3,300. And this, so this non-prescriptive, more challenge-based approach has been seen very, as a successful way forward. Um, and this is very much also linked in, and we talked about that this morning, about the need now for public investment and public sector reform. And we talked a little bit about that as well. On that. And one of the ways forward on that is this policy support facility which is being developed at the moment. They also looked at the idea, of course, why we're here around smart specialization, which will underpin the future support for R&I in the structural funds. And also, we talked very much about closing this innovation divide with the four measures that have come up of teaming, twinning, era chairs, and cost. And looking again at the synergies which we need to make between structural funds and horizon. And what that last sentence there is, I think it's an important sentence, that someone said there is a broad political consensus in the EU that R&I, research and investment, are indispensable to sustainable growth. It reminds me of Mrs. Thatcher saying there is no alternative I remember in my past years. Um, so very much smart specialization though is not just linked within the region anymore, it's very much linked to an international value chains. And this came up as a key word that we need to work, co cooperate within the region but also between regions. It's important to look outwards and to work together. So also that brings in the cooperation between public and private sectors on, on that level. 
I'm going to go on to this next slide. What well, we're actually coming on to smart specialization now. And what was an interesting thing was, I think the define is interesting being here in Latvia, was that we, we want to talk about smart specialization, but smart specialization may mean different things to different people from different regions and different contexts. And I was making the point where we saw that Latvia was a modest innovator, has low research and innovation investment. It is developing its innovation ecosystem, but it has a low performance in Horizon 2020, but it has quite a lot of structural funds. And this is where we see the difference where we've talked about Stutt I'm using Stuttgart, who we talked about, Tom Piret, and obviously Eindhoven, who are here. High innovators, high R&I investment, a developed innovation ecosystem, high performance in Horizon 2020, but lacking, in a way, well, some would say, you know, a lack of structural funds or a lower level of structural funds. So there are different types of combination of things which are going on around in smart specialization, which means a different type of approach. This is a little slide that I put on the development. I think you can see that there. And this came up in the bun of the debates, and I think what you see is that this smart specialization very much is a, quite a complex, and I think we all know it's very complex uh, way of looking at it. And here I've tried to look at the way that research and innovation brings in its funding from Horizon, it brings in from national funding. We're reminded that European funding is a, a minority funding instrument. Most funding still comes from national measures. Um, and then we see the smart specialized implementation is very important. And this is where you can bring in new financial instruments. And this is where we have this, what we call EDP, this entrepreneurial discovery process, which needs a lot of political support, which leads us to our demand-driven innovation, which leads to economic growth. But we were reminded by the OECD of what type of economic growth. And we were, the type of growth that we were getting and also the skilled things. And the skills have come up quite a bit. It came up this morning about the low skills, bringing people in, reskilling people for new economic transformations. You'll also talked about there, we had a very interesting debate around monitoring and looking at the priorities and the policy mix. But this monitoring, in a way, is part of this ongoing Europe, uh, uh, entrepreneurial discovery process, that this is a continual process, that we don't just do smart specialization, it's an ongoing process, a reiterative process. But also one of the areas that came up as well, which was interesting, was looking at one of the ways of implementing smart specialization was on the project selection. And how do we make the criteria, what were the cultures of what we were doing in this project selection? So that was a sort of an opening area yesterday morning. I want to now go on some of the areas that I went to and we picked up. I didn't pick up all the sessions, and I apologize for that, the later ones today. But one of the interesting ones we went to on the quadruple helix, um, this was an interesting one because one of the questions was we didn't talk about the quadruple helix in the quadruple helix session, and I think that was an interesting point. There was a lack of grasping of what this quadruple helix could be, and so I said we're still in the triple helix. But it was an interesting one around this sort of challenge-focused research and the way that if we use citizens around this challenge base, that the citizens can provide the actual research focus for much of the work that's going on in universities. Citizens can also be test beds, and we'd have a very strong living lab uh, movement in Europe. Uh, we did, and we also have that how do we engage people and what sort of discourse do we need to gain people into this sort of quadruple helix. There's also this notion of the fourth mission, the role of the university. And the role of the universities can be seen as how much they engage within the region, how are they engaged in the smart specialization process. And this whole idea of the fourth mission is very much about behavioral change in the region. It's not just about going out to the region, but really seeing a learning process within the region. The open data one was actually quite linking, and I linked those two together, because one of the ways forward on the citizen engagement and fourth, you know, the quadruple helix could be the role of open data. It could be the role of we're moving towards this open data area. One of the things that didn't come up, I think, was the ethical dimension. That was something that was mentioned, that we didn't discuss the ethical dimension, although you can see where all the citizens are, everybody has their smartphone, but we talked about the ability to get hold of the data or not getting hold of the data, and this was an important area. But it was very interesting to have the company from the Netherlands there, which was showing an example of an emerging industry, 
um, on that level. But the other area that we didn't discuss was how was open data really contributing to innovation? And there's still more work I think we need to look at that. And plus the role of academics, if you open up to data, open the science, what are the incentives for academics? What are the reward structures? But it certainly plays very much, I think, into the smart cities agenda, this area on there. The other one was governance. I think there was a link there with quite a lot between developing the notion of capacity that we got, the role of the state. This is something we're doing in our smart spec, and that was mentioned, I think, yesterday. Uh, there's a project on smart specialization uh, that we're working on with 10 regions, and one of the key questions we have is governance. Uh, and it's now in the aspect of how we govern the proceed the smart specialization and how we see the role of the state. Uh, so we've got different versions of the state, the state-centric, the embedded state, entrepreneurial state, and in a state as an administrator or a state as a driver of change. And this can be put there obviously for a regional context as well. And then on the structures of what sort of new structures might we need to start to let rink into smart specialization. We've had a lot of debate around sort of should we set up innovation councils? Um, and if there are innovation councils of these new sorts of dimensions, who is on these people? Who do we put on? Are they politicians? Are they academics? Are they industry people? How do you know who to involve? And we have this uh, uh, question of rent seeking. Are we putting on people who are just defending their own interests um, in the past? And how do we build these consensus? So that's a quite a very, very, very interesting area. To, and I think that area will be going quite a lot. The interregional one I think was interesting as well because when we talk about interregional, we often just talk about cross-border, interreg Europe, which is coming up starting now in Ju Janu Ju July. But what was interesting, I think we had two new, three new examples. One was the Vanguard initiative, um, and this Vanguard has been absolutely driven by smart specialization, and it would not have happened. I think we can say we, if we hadn't had smart specialization, we would not have had Vanguard. And so I think that's a really quite a key driver, and it's got a lot of political support. We also saw the campus Iberus, which is also looking at interregional co collaboration within the uh, within a, a, a member state, mainly Spain. And there you see the collaboration for critical mass. But it was also very interesting for the KICS, this regional innovation scheme. And I've mentioned the climate kick because I think climate kick was the the kick that has really engaged 12 regions very much into this uh, this kick. And that's a very interesting area. So there's a lot of interest around the interreg, but this collaboration. But it doesn't have to. Be. I think this is the point. It doesn't have to necessarily go back to the old cross-border or the interreg. We can see new opportunities for interregional collaboration. The synergies it was a, an obviously a key debate for us, and I think that's again one of the key areas that we're looking at in this conference. It's, it's whether we had this debate: is it a combination of funding, or is it smarter working? Is it role, looking at the role of specialization? Um, also, if we're looking at these global value chains, we have to look at the synergies both with inside the region and along outside the region. So it's a very important way. And it was very interesting to see some of the work being done on the stairway to excellence in this area on, on that level. And yeah, no, sorry, I didn't mention there the role of the research and technology organizations, which also gives us a new area, this intermediary area between the academics and the practitioners. And I think that was a very good presentation on that as well. S3 and WIRE, um, this was coming back to Marco Marcola, who's this morning, and I think he mentioned, of course, when we've been talking about, it, this is the number six um, smart special, you know, WIRE, and um, I can't think that we talk, talked about smart specialization in number one or number two. Possibly, no, no, no. Not, yes. not coming up there. So, but we're coming certainly smart specialization, this economic transformation. And one of the things that quotes we like to use, which is in our thing, is this building on the past while breaking with the past. It's really using your competitive assets, but making sure you can break away, you can stop the path dependency. And this is where we then talked about open innovation this morning, quadruple helix, again bringing in the citizen quote, the new mindsets, and again moving a bit, I think, into this new era of the building human and social capital, smart citizens, smart cities. So in the overview of the, the day, or the t day and a half, I think one of the areas that we'd, I'd like to pick up on is the, we've been very much on a policy area, um, very much around structures, and I think this is now a time where we need to start to work on the practitioner side. 
It's looking at the practice. And I think that's something that we might want to do perhaps in future wires. I think there were some good examples from the city uh, exa today. I wasn't there, but we heard that there were some good examples of that. We also need to move perhaps from the structures that we've set up into a more agent approach. Who is doing the work? Looking at a little bit more the people. And somebody one in one of the seminars said, well, structures are okay, but it's the people who make them work. And then we need to engage more practitioners generally and widen this triple helix and trying to see where we can get to the quadruple helix. And our communication strategies need to target audiences clearer. I mean, we had a good example, I think, in the press conference where there was a bit of a complaint about people not understanding a lot of the jargon of what we're talking about. We had a good debate on that. And so finally, I'd like to say then, why? What have we done? What have we learned? I think we need to capture more of this, and it will be captured in a good report. We also need to be clear what we need. If we are regions, and we've said that why is a regional uh, event, uh, we need to be clear on this of what regions really need, and this is where we have a policy influencing role. And this is when we need to have a position as wire and have a position as a communication tool. And I think this is very, very valuable. And so our clear question will be, and will be answered, I think, in a moment, by where are we going next? Where's the next? And this is where our two next speakers, I think, will help us to, to take that debate on. But my final slide, I think, I hope, is here, is this. I'd just like to say why it was all about research, innovation, growth, action. Or regions implementing smart specialization generates acceleration. And that's what we want to do. We're here to act. We're here to accelerate the process. So thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. This, especially the ending was very pleasing indeed for everybody here, I think. But um, I think you will agree that it is uh, always when we convene in conferences like this, uh, there is uh, a very limited uh, possibility uh, and our power to bring in politicians. Even today, when we had a press conference, uh, it, it was a, a kind of 100% promise from the Parliamentary Secretary of Ministry of Finance to attend this press conference, and his was, he was indeed very devoted and enthusiastic to come. But unfortunately, his, his speech in Parliament uh, for, about tax policy took longer as, as, as expected, and question session even longer, that he couldn't make it. But bringing uh, and teaching this, this uh, jargon, these uh, concepts, these understandings, opinions, and policy platforms to politicians is still uh, a task which, which I think every member state is, uh, is, is facing. Because uh, we, we all know how, how much it is still dependent on, on our politicians when the governments or, or uh, EU governance support is needed for launching, closing, revitalizing, or renewing anything what, what's, what's so needed for, for uh, every sector and all sectors together. So, therefore, I'm pleased that we are having a one politician, a politician here <laughs> from EU Parliament. So, please, I'm, 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 I'm giving a word to uh, Lambert von der Nistelstroy, and we will be happy to hear after roundup what's your vision and what's your message. Thank you, thank you very much for having me here. Wire inspires. This is my conclusion. Wire inspires, and if you look to this little, little pearl or is amber amber and you look you look deeper you see you see a little instrument in it no it's an insect or what is it an ins it's insect, insect. Yeah. and it brings light to our to our debate but the insect the ant is what really inspires me now to think about what are we doing are we just in the big political debates Grasping here and there a little bit, giving a signal and have a new instrument here or there? Or are we doing something fundamental? Are you doing something fundamental? This is the question. 
And yes, I was there in the first wire conference in Granada. They did not talk about smart specialization. Do you know where they talked about? The directors were really important from research in all the countries. They talked about the S3 list, where to bring this big research center and uh, how to fight between the countries, how to make this list decisions without money, uh, without too uh, But anyway, these were the debates. And now you are much deeper in the really everyday change of instruments and policy. This is the big change. This is a question of ownership. It was the DG Research, who, who, RTD, who brought this initiative. And still now, I see too less participation from the regional policy. And this, I don't know why, because there is always this column thinking in European Commission. But you are much further, because we bring the idea to make the synergies and the other things to you and say so how we solve it together. But to be honest, the two directorates didn't really get through in the roundabout. We are still in some lanes, you know. This is a political signal. This, this is not the future. So what shall I do? Stay away of excellence is one of the examples that have inspired us to come forward and to make progress. I have some slides, but we will especially around it tell the position of the European Parliament in this, um, in, in this whole thing. Where is my, not here. So, the background, the background of what we are doing is in fact this unbalanced Europe. You see this innovation gap very clearly in the innovation scoreboard. And in fact, this is, when you look to European policies, this is something strange. 90% of the horizon money is coming into the old member states. 80% of much bigger budget from cohesion is going to the new member states. This is Europe. Hello. Is this reality? Yes, this is reality. And your work is bringing the bridges together and helping us the type of debate that we are going to have very soon on the midterm review. In 2016-17, there is an open debate in the Parliament, Commission, Council, on how do we make the progress up to 2020 and after 2020. This debate will be opened. And in this debate, it, it, we, we need to come to a better balance between the two instruments. Both instruments are European-wide. This is very important. It's, no, uh, it's not acceptable for us that cohesion policy in the future will be a compensation policy to the, to the poorer or to the less developed. Then you missed the bus, missed the key change that we did in the regulations in the years that have passed, in the changes there. If I tell you that from the European Regional Investment Fund, now, you know it's about 180 billion, Mil, a billion, and that now do you have 43 billion directly invested in research and development. And if you compare this, for instance, with the programs two periods ago, it was 4%, 7%. And now we are at, we went up to one quarter or 30%. So this is the reality that is the change what we already got in. And that's why I say, if you talk in wire about changes in the horizon and in teaming and twinning and, and the era share, etc., look the other way around where the money is. And look what we did in, the, in these regulations. We opened the opportunity to use 15% of the structural funds of the ERDF, 15% to, to send their students out to 
to, to, to make inter-regional cooperation happen. But it has been taken up too less, far too less, in the actual uh, operational programs that are just signed by European Commission and the Member States. There is still an attitude that, that's in a way like this. The nose goes down and they try to, to, to get via good planning, smart specialization, ex ante conditionality, to get the money and then immediately to absorb the money. Because if you don't spend it in two or three years, it, you have to pay it back. The nose is totally down. And what we have to do now with the crisis, with the new Juncker Commission, and with the, the political debate, is put the nose up. And you showed us in this conference, after six conferences on the wire, where the bottom in this debate can be, which instruments we can use. And in this midterm review, I think what we can do is make much better use of your results. And there was one line on communication. I think you are enormously internal looking to how you solve the problems. But what my biggest invitation to you, my biggest wish is that you, that you uh, take the opportunity just now where we have the new Juncker Commission, they have three t bullet points, better regulation. They have the bullet point of a better internal market and the new investment plan to say there is something missing. There is something missing of a partnership with those who work on innovation, those who work at the city or regional level, who work together, inter-regional, inter-city, and they have an idea how you can get quicker out of the crisis, how you can better use this central in three instruments that the European Commission is working on in a new partnership. I want to have a kind of a, a new pact on innovation, a European-wide pact on innovation, carried by the decentralized actors. And this might be a possibility to to get on board quickly. I'm the president of the Knowledge for Innovation uh, Network, Knowledge for Innovation, that is holding in December in European Parliament for the, their, their seventh uh, Knowledge for Innovation Innovative Week. And there are three days. And during this, the, the, the theme of this political action in the European uh, Parliament, that's party brought over the parties, that's called Pact of Innovation. And maybe, together with the Committee of the Regions, together with the other umbrellas, we can get, let me say, a lot of signals from the political responsibility, well, people, elected people and uh, others, from entrepreneurs, sent into the European Commission during the last months of this year. Come up with thousand letters, with own studies on innovation, on growth and jobs, on, on the new approach, the digital agenda, etc. Come up with that, be visible, communicate. Don't say we have a communication officer. Communicate yourself. And this might be very important, I think, for the next phase of the political debate. Now I speed up a little bit with my slides. Okay, innovation paradox, I already talked about. You discussed it here. I don't, uh, uh, go, don't go and to repeat it. Again, the last one, a little connection, cohesion policy and the financing instruments. There we have to, and we will make quick progress. Look just to how the Polish Operational plans are done really top. A high value added um, economy is evoking there, in which they combine the strategy of knowledge and innovation with production. And if you don't produce, you can't export, you can't consume. This is the easy way. Earning the, our future. This is the way we have to do. And if you combine this whole story, 
it might be important to take this on board in the new debates on the structural funds. And the stairway to excellence. I made the amendment in the parliament. I will already be handed over for the continuation of the stairway of, action, uh, of excellence uh, budget for the next years to come is just one example. From the structural funds to create an opportunity to go quicker into the knowledge-driven economy and to learn a lot. And it is indeed not immediately clear what, for instance, the triple helix is. In some countries, you have still the separate, let me say, scientific column. They, they educate first class, excellent people, okay. But we, we need something much lower in this educational column, the, these crossings with entrepreneurs, with economy. And so this is also a learning process. It's not everywhere. It's not clear. If it's clear in Finland or, or here in Latvia, we have still to work on these kind of things. Uh, the stairway to excellence is one of the possibilities. Then let me finish. Let me finish by the, the way forward. In the, in the parliamentary debate, your type of instruments, your experience might be really important for the post-2020 decisions to be made on the, on the fence. I think that after a referendum in the UK, I hope, I, I expect that UK stays in. But this will go under uh, enormous pressure. They put a the knife together with other net pay countries into the budgets. And don't trust the member states too much. They already cut every time the horizon budget. And they will cut the structural funds. And then under this big change, there are, we have to find new, new ways of thinking. No longer giving envelopes to poor regions like Sicily. And they have three days of a big festivity because they were for the sixth, seventh time, they were the poorest region. What are we talking about? This is, this is old politics. We will say those who get in with the, fire, the new instruments are able to get into this policy, of course, with some more money for the poor regions, but European-wide new approach. So at the end of the day, I think you, it's not a little ant and not a little insect, but it is in fact, like you said, Richard, it, you are the elephant in the room if you move and if are you visible and if you make yourself heard to the parliament. And what I will do is I will go with a delegation of 10 members of the parliament in the end of the year. We, we go to Seville, to the Joint Research Center. We're going to listen to their stories, what they do there with smart specialization. Because you understand here together what all those words mean. The journalists did not understand it. The normal people don't understand it. But make central political representatives in the national states and in European Parliament, make them understand how important and how, how vivid your approach is for the future. So this is an invitation that I give you at the end of this uh, conference. So oh, be proud and be loud. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lambert. Well, I think that when one conference ends and there is somebody who, who has to take uh, and bring it further for some next year or the next round, always have some difficulty because he have to invent what, what new and what was innovative to, 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 to focus the next conference round. Uh, we uh, already discussed during these two days that probably there would be a good value of, of having some short brainstorming about what all these wire conferences did so far, how far did they move, the understanding and, and, and philosophy of, 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 of uh, innovation and, 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 and risk three and, and structural instruments. But now I will give a word to 
to accessor of this uh, Riga event. And as we know that from uh, January next year, the presidency is taken over by the Netherlands. And therefore, we have a volunteer organization <laughs> who will be in charge of the next conference. So my pleasure is to introduce to you Wim der Kinderen, organizer of the next VAR conference, please. Dear uh, friends, I am uh, extremely happy to be here on stage at the end of an exciting two and for some of you even three day uh, conference that has been excellently organized by our Latvian colleagues and I was not only happy, I was also a little bit scared to be here on stage after Lambert van Nistelrooy's intervention because as you know and have witnessed just now, Lambert is an extremely engaged MEP and a big supporter from the WIRE conference from the start and we very much share the same view on regions and innovation and this has a lot to do with the fact that we both come from the same region which is the Dutch Brainport Eindhoven region, part of the province of North Brabant. So what news would I be able to add here as a last speaker? Well, it's already been said so I have something and it's the announcement of next year's WIRE conference, the seventh edition that will happen in Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Because as you may know, the Netherlands will take over the presidency of the EU Council during the first semester of next year, 2016. And even if a detailed program still is to be developed, the basic three principles underlying the Dutch presidency have already been communicated by the government. And as it happens, some of the key words in them innovation, focus and connecting link very well with the topics that are at the core of each WIRE conference. So when we will be organizing WIRE in Eindhoven next year, we will of course build on WIRE's legacy so far and will add a new chapter. Some key words of next year's program will definitely include public-private cooperation, smart governance, the need for focused research investments in a context of scarce budgets, as well as assuring excellence in regional programs and introducing place-based elements in excellence-driven programs. And as you can see on the map here, Eindhoven is the one on the bottom right, as a border region close to Belgium and Germany, cross-border cooperation in a new non-traditional way will also be key in the program. When building the program, and this really has to start happening, so I can't share much with you on details today, of course, but when building the program of the conference, we think that some Eindhoven experiences could very well serve as a source of inspiration. Next year, the Philips company that originated in Eindhoven will celebrate its 125th birthday. And for a very long period, the city of Eindhoven and the region as well, has been a typical example of a one company town where everything was done and owned by one single company. Today the Brainport Eindhoven region is a knowledge intensive manufacturing region in the heart of Europe where not one but many large and successful companies find their home base. Open innovation, shared facilities, and cooperation in the supply chain are core elements of the strategies of our companies and of the region. For a long time, we as a region have almost exclusively been focusing on the importance of research and innovation as such. Quite successfully, as you can see on this slide, both in a Dutch context, where you see that the Netherlands as a country is situated even below the EU level average on R&D investments and also successful therefore in a European perspective. In the last years however we have been shifting our focus from being smart to being strong. Again with success as you as research has shown us every euro invested in research and innovation leads to a bigger economic effect of 2.3 euro. During the last 10 years the Brainport Eindhoven economy has grown 1.5 times stronger 
than the Dutch average. And still, we think this cannot be a reason to be happy and continue to act in the same way as we have been doing in the last years. So this week, last Monday, we launched our new regional economic strategy called Brainport Next Generation. Apart from the large economic drivers that we will continue to support and the priority clusters and societal challenge that we will focus on, and that of course are still part of our new strategy, the key word in Brainport Next Generation is agility. It's the importance and the capacity to be able to constantly adapt and change and proactively deal with often unexpected changes that for sure will happen. The changes known, but the content of the change is not. So agility is for us the new challenge. And this is far more important than predicting how the region will look like in the year 2030, which is the topic of most regional strategies. So agility. And agility will also be demanded from you during next year's conference because we want to make sure, and even if it's a hard exercise, we want to make sure that next year's conference is as interactive and flexible as possible. And we will therefore demand input from you and allow you to contribute to a maximum, as well before the conference as during the conference. So, to finish, we really look forward to host you in Eindhoven next year using this logo, and we hope you will see it a lot in the next 12 months, on 9 and 10 June 2016. So, keep a constant eye on the website that has been launched as well earlier this week. The day before the conference, we will be organizing, as it's a tradition by now as well, a one-day program of site visits throughout the Brainport, Eindhoven region and the larger area of the province of North Brabant. So, see you all next year in the Netherlands. Thank you, Netherlands, and thank you, Wim, for this very inspiring presentation. I think we definitely have our agendas clear for that because I think everybody here is, is always eager to, to see how all this is, is progressing and, and developing. Well, we are very close to the end now, dear friends, and uh, there is just maybe uh, some, some few sentences I would like to say from the Latvian side. We had today in press conference uh, pretty well attended by media and I have to just probably inform you that there was uh, press from Research Europe, from both the journal and science and business and uh, all Latvian uh, central medias, both written and, and TV. So the coverage was, was quite good, acceptable which was quite surprising for us, because normally, indeed, what Latvia is, 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 is facing all the time is how to teach both politicians and journalists to speak or to think about research and innovation. And it's not really an uh, easy job. We are we're permanently uh, uh, fighting with this, how to make them more interested and more devoted, and how to make them understand what we at all are talking about. Well, today in the press conference, indeed, there were very straight and forward questions from, from, from journalists. What all this policy framework, this umbrella policy, and all these instruments, which make it altogether quite a complicated picture, and understand, understandable well only by those who are having hands on creation or implementation of these instruments. So what it all brings to entrepreneur and how faster to bring this message to him. Well, I have to say that conferences like this is, uh, is very much learning for, for policy makers, practitioners and, and research managers, as we are here. Because uh, in order to really to define in the right words and in, an, in, in motivating words, these messages which we are creating here to the broader public, it really needs to repeat and to repeat it for ourselves, what it is all about and what it is, what, what, what really drives it, it further. Because we are having a lot of conferences discussing things close to this and, 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 and like this, but uh, when we have to retell that to the general public, then we are a little bit um, 
nervous and, and, and stressed because we, we cannot find the words which apart from jargon, which is so, so useful and, 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 and familiar to us, how to bring it in, in, the, in the straight and forward words. Well, there are a few things which indeed uh, we as Latvians, as, as organizers of this conference together with the European Commission and having an advantage of having more people from Latvia and Riga being present here as probably your compatriots, because it's, it's, it's happening here in Riga, we took indeed some messages. We took messages, and if you allow, I'll just say a few of them, that first of all, we appreciated very much these very precise guidance, which in three uh, uh, plenary sessions and six parallel sessions, speakers were about close to 60 in number. That means that every person who spoke in, 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 in this auditorium, they had their own practices, uh, conclusions and ideas to share. That is why these conferences are needed for. Because indeed the, the policy framework is complex enough, the reactions and actions to done by member states are complex at the same time, and even more complex for, for those who are mostly repeating, uh, receiving these EU structural funds, not those who are winning Horizon 2020. <laughs> so for us, it's even more difficult uh, to, to really to find the right answers. We did hear a lot of answers during these two days. And uh, one of those which I probably will mention is that I liked the, the notion from Iarto representative, and she said, well, in all levels, governmental, regional, and local, first find RTOs and see where they are, because that is the, the, this chain between your researchers, your scientists, mm -hmm. and industry and production, which will bring this, this thing close to, 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 to reality and make it vivid. Um, of course, we learned a lot, lot about the ecosystem, and Mrs. Mr. Zmarkola's presentation was indeed putting even more things together, even more uh, adding uh, uh, value and, and, and strength to, to, to this policy. But at the end, uh, I think that, well, EU is so big, and countries are so different, and policies sometimes for the small and, and not so uh, frontier countries sometimes feels like they are not written for us, but for somebody else. But no, the latest years indeed persuades us that there is a lot of in initiatives which are really drawn, especially for, the, for, for those modest innovators like we are. And especially I have to, had to mention here stairways to excellence. We had in February here this conference organized by GRC together with us. And indeed that was the place where, where the very practical things were shared from uh, research managers, from research institutions, from, from practitioners and from uh, public administration representatives, what everybody can do in that, that this stairways to heaven one day happens. So at the end of all this, I, of course, I'm, I'm thanking your patience and your being here. Um, I have to thank, of course, European Commission, which helped us very much to put all this thing together, and especially uh, st strategic committee, which we were working for four months to put this together and to find out what exactly to be said this time. Uh, I'm thanking my Ministry of Education and Science, and especially Agrita, who, who uh, gave a lot of input and impetus for, for what, what what we had to take out from this conference. And uh, of course, I'm thanking uh, my team, which helped me and you to feel comfortable here in this conference. And as uh, Lambert noted on this sunny and uh, warm stone, <laughs> which is on the symbol of this conference, I just thank you once more again, and I hope you felt the same warm and sunny these days in Riga.